Oh, hey guys, welcome back. So today is a plant tour video. I am very busy today. <laughs> very, very, wow, I can't even speak. Very, very busy. I'm planning and I'm, it's like 8 a.m. I'm trying to be very ambitious. I'm working on a collab, like a Christmas collab with a lot of plant YouTubers. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do that first. So sneak peek. So I'm just gonna sit on the ground. <laughs> and have my Thai constellation and my brand Tiatum just hanging out. And of course, this is a Scott Grows an Avocado Tree production. I will put the link for the one that was done last year. I was very nervous because like it was my first year doing it. So like, don't make fun of me. But yeah, we're basically singing like a plant version of So we'll let you know on the social medias. Scott, if you're watching this, you're, f oh, I almost swore. <laughs> You're amazing, you're amazing, you're amazing. So I'm gonna start filming. This is kind of scary. <laughs> it's a couple hours later. It took longer than I thought. We're just gonna speed through all these plot chores. I feel like every video is gonna have these little baby anthuriums I got from North Shore Tropicals. So the reservoir is actually pretty dry. You know, I'm a little shocked because even, obviously I know evaporation is a thing, but usually if they're small plants, you know, there's not that much evaporation. I'm just gonna run water over them and I'm checking all them. They feel fantastic. That is the Magnificum Luxurians. This is the Crystallinum. Magnificum Luxurians, so cute. And then Crystallina Magnificum, so cute. I'm just gonna run them over water and then fill this dog bowl. Okay, so just a little bit of water and just back under the grow light. Okay guys, more than ever, the upper permanent marble has been so neglected. I feel really bad. She still looks good. Um, I'm having that same issue and I know it's because I'm not watering it, but the new leaf isn't even open and then there's a new one coming. Do you see that? So we're just gonna let it like run under the faucet and hopefully it does okay. Okay, I'm just gonna push her to the corner for now. And I think it's time to water my Monstera Thai Constellation. So, oh my God, this one is so strange. Like the shape of the leaf is very strange. Here are some roots. I want to talk about what I think about growing Thai Constellations in an aeroid mix. I mean, y'all know that I've had so much luck with my Thai Constellation in Lekka. And to be honest, guys, when they live in Le Chouza Pond, they really take off as well. Just knowing that information, it really tells me that the roots need a lot of aeration. And I know this is the same for a lot of other plants. But once upon a time, I did have these Monstera Thai Constellations in a a really dense aeroid mix. It was probably only coco coir, perlite, and worm castings, and maybe a little bit of bark. Very dense. And there was root growth. The only difference though is that the plant wasn't pushing out new growth. It wasn't growing fast. It was only when I changed my mix to a chunkier one. Lots of pumice, lots of perlite, lots of bark, lots of charcoal. I always tell myself, if you think it's chunky enough, add just a little bit more chunk. Especially in larger containers like this one, it's stays wet for so long. So if you're planting a Thai constellation in a pot like this, if you think it's chunky enough, I would just recommend adding more chunky. Even if it's not a Monstera, just know the mix you are using. Because to be honest, guys, these mixes are too dense still. Obviously, that's not the end of the world, but just as long as you know how your aeroid mix or soil behaves, then you could adjust appropriately. And using that as like the first thing you think about, it kind of dictates how you water. And that might be another reason why I can go four weeks without watering this Thai constellation. Because I know for a fact there's not enough bark, there's not enough perlite, there's not enough pumice and so this medium holds on to more water if there was more bark if there was more pumice then maybe i would change my routine anyhow i'm rambling i'm talking so much let's water these so actually looking at this thai constellation she has fresh aerial root so I do plan on propagating her. So I'm gonna air layer her using the Ziploc method. I haven't shown this in a while and it's actually so wild to me that I still get people commenting that they use the Ziploc method. This is by no means like, new innovative <laughs> it's not like a new invention by any means but i'm just taking a sandwich bag here and i'm just cutting one end so then you have a sleeve and then i'm gonna take the leaf is bigger than i thought then you're gonna <laughs> i'm basically putting the leaf through okay once your ziploc is through oh i did this wrong 
Eh, we could work with it. So I feel like I would also do it over the second leaf as well. I'm basically just resting it over here and tying this end around the stem. I'm using plant tape and just securing it in place. Then we're just gonna grab some wet sphagnum moss and just put it in. You just need to take the Ziploc and just zip it up. This will keep in the moisture. And in my opinion, it kind of keeps things cleaner. If I ever needed to wet the moss, I can just open it a little bit here and just water it. If I wasn't planning to propagate, I would definitely just wait for that aerial root to grow a little bit more. And then I would guide it into the aeroid mix. Here's the thing with this Thai constellation. There's already no room for any additional roots. You can see this one wanted to. She's coming out of the aeroid mix because there's no room. So I do unfortunately have to chop her. I've seen other methods where people put another pot in an aeroid mix or whatever, whatever substrate. Y'all know that I am very limited when it comes to space. So this keeps it nice and compact. So I'm just gonna put her in the sink and I'm just gonna take the marble back cause she is nice and wet. And I'm just putting the other one in here. Okay, we have our little babies here. So I'm just gonna, run water over the substrate. Okay, I'm just gonna let them sit a little bit just so the water drains from the bottom. And once I grabbed the moss, I remembered one of my Jose Bonos is too tall. I put the other one on a moss pole, but this one is like way too tall that I just need to air layer it. When the top part has enough root growth, I'm gonna propagate the whole thing. Guys. <laughs> Look at this. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. So, oh, I'm stepping on things. This is the new leaf. How do we feel, guys? She is pushing out new leaf. I find that once these establish them themselves and you give it the right conditions, they just push out leaves so fast. The plan is to just propagate or air layer, not propagate yet, Kevin, cover these two nodes. And I'm gonna use a, z uh, what was I saying? I'm blacking out. A bigger Ziploc <laughs> to cover these two nodes. When this leaf comes out, hardens off, I'll make a chop below the moss ball and then just do single leaf cuttings with the rest of them. Okay, I'm gonna try to use my chair like that. Do you see how it's falling? Oh my God. Okay, same idea, big Ziploc. And you don't need to cut all the way if you know that the width of the leaves are not that wide. So I'm just leaving a little bit of space there that's intact. And because this is a bigger one, we can easily just fit all the leaves. I know what y'all are saying. It's gonna get real heavy, I know. This plant is already leading on my Thai constellations. So that's why I'm watering the Thai constellations now. So I could kind of leave her resting on all these huge leaves. Okay, so some plant tape at the bottom. Let's grab the moss. And I guess I'll use my body <laughs> as a support for now but we're just putting sphagnum moss in. And again, you don't need to pack it. Roots, adventitious roots, as long as there's high humidity around the roots, they will grow. <laughs> just need to find ways, guys, to do things but all by yourself. <laughs> when you need an extra hand, use your mouth. Okay, we're gonna have to do it again. <laughs> Okay, we're just gonna stick with the two. Um, I'm gonna just put this on the ground right now so it's leaning against my table. And then once once I put my Thai constellations back, I'll just grab her and then lean her against all of that. I think they've been, oh, I got the sachet. So you can see she's wet all the way through. We're just gonna put her back on the saucer and put her back and same with this one. Okay guys, I got two more and this one. Oh, look at this new leaf, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. Same with this one right there at the bottom. New root growth. Okay, we're gonna do the same. Okay, again, we're gonna let them sit in the sink for just a little bit. Let's do something else. I feel like this is just a Monstera and Jose Bono plant video. Look at this beauty. I'm so excited. Nourish your tropicals moss pole. Yeah, I don't know. I think this plant is just really thirsty. 
I know the roots are really big. She's drying out a lot. Good thing though, the moss is not completely dry, so it's not going to like be an issue rehydrating. So I'm just gonna run the faucet. Oh, I should take the sachets away. Oh my God, sachets away. <laughs> sachets away. No, no one. Okay, I'm gonna have to put in the sink actually. The angle is just like not working. I don't know what y'all can see guys, but I'm just gonna do this quickly. Okay, I already overdid it guys. So these planters have a stopper at the bottom. I'm just gonna open it and just continue because a moss pull isn't fully moist. So you see the water is dripping. Now I can liberally do it without worrying about filling the reservoir. Good thing that these moss poles are clear because I can fully see. you know, how wet the moss is. So I'm just letting that drain now. Okay, are we okay? Sometimes you have to tilt it to help it out a little bit. Just an update on the roots. So this one has really just gone in there and you could see she's very happy. Second one up here is touching a little bit. These two are just here and happy. And then the one up here, look at you trying to latch on, so exciting. Oh my God, I just noticed this. Oh no, you're in the moss pole. <gasps> Hold on. Crisis. This is a crisis. I might damage the leaf inside because I kind of feel like there's one forming, but like I have no choice. I have to do it. It's so. Oh. Okay, how do I prevent this? I guess I have to fill the whole moss pole. <gasps> Alrighty, let's put these Thai constellations back. Okay, this one new leaf how do we feel guys and this one is the one that i propagated and now super exciting and she has these two small leaves oh i wonder if it's gonna be this splashy that'd be interesting i'd be excited to see okay update on the strawberry shake bucket <laughs> someone suggested just to put this end in water and then therefore since there's no leca interfering then it'll be really wet by the time it touches the leca um there is a new leaf oh, i can't even show you but i'm afraid it's gonna get stuck so you saw that root before beautiful root if you want a closer look future kevin zoom in look at that root and then you see that new one right there that's a new one guys future kevin zoom in again incredible look at her i think i'm gonna just maybe make a sh string or wick ball like into the leka here what can i use i'm just gonna fill this with water and then just put these ends here and then just rest this on the leka i'm just gonna wet everything first including that leaf where are you leaf so i just soaked the whole thing the moss pole leka and fix i'm just putting them in like this and then we're just gonna rest it on top do you see so the wicks in the container and we'll try this. Fingers crossed, guys. Let me put her back. So they're all water. Let's put them back. And I think I'm gonna repot my Anthurium vitiae because the leaf isn't fully hardened off, but she's kind of been like that for a little bit. Yeah, might be a mistake, but we're gonna do it. I'm gonna try my best, guys, not to damage the leaves. Please to take in this beautiful leaf. Oh, yeah, she is pretty much hardened off, but not quite. Obviously, she's not this green yet. But um, okay, let me just grab a hey, planter. We're using one of these pots. I'm a little scared that she might be stuck in her small little pot, guys. Anyhow, we will see. So I'm just putting the indicator and then we're throwing it in just like this. I'm gonna do it on the floor because why not? Here is my pawn and here is the plant. First, I'm just going to pour the existing plant, pour. I'm just pouring any loose pond. And while I do this, if there's a new leaf, I keep a close eye. So she's not touching anything. Just kind of squeezing the pot. Guys, look, future Kevin Zoom in. Look at this. Look at these roots. Okay, I'm trying to release the bottom. Okay, this is kind of a nightmare because the indicator that comes with these closed systems, you have to, oh my God, do you hear the pond dropping? 
my boyfriend's gonna kill me. You have to like push it through the hole. Oh, and I think the plant's roots are really latching on. Oh, okay. Okay, we have progress. We have progress. Here it is. I think this might be one of the last plants I have in these closed... No, I have some Hoyas in them. Okay, you can do this. Future Kevin will thank you. Okay, I'm gonna put it in because I'm making a mess. Oh, okay, perfect, guys. She's not quite at the bottom, but there is more room to put more pond just so all the other adventitious roots can be covered by new pond. How exciting. Okay, okay, can I like let you go? Okay, yes I can. Okay, have some pond here. Yeah, guys, I am very excited to see this plant take off. Shake it a little bit, guys, just so you have the distribution. Okay, she's in a new home, guys. Incredible. Can you believe the beauty? Ugh, I can't. Okay, let me clean this up quickly, and then we'll put some water. What was that noise? Okay, I think we're okay. I'm just gonna put some water in the reservoir. Okay, oh my God, what a beauty. She is gonna do so well in her new home. I could barely recognize you. Who are you? Looking so good. Okay, I got a couple of questions recently about pawn and supplemental nutrients. This is kind of a debatable opinion again. I feel like all my opinions are controversial. The bag of pawn comes with a slow release fertilizer already in it. So I think they say, is it three to six months? That your plant should be okay in the medium. So theoretically, you could just put water and theoretically your plant will have three to six months worth of proper nutrition. The thing is basically, obviously pond wasn't made for aeroids. It was kind of just made as a general substrate. So potentially an anthurium might need more supplemental nutrition. A philodendron, a monstera. You know, looking away from the plants that I have, what if we were looking at flowering plants? Obviously there's different nutritional needs that they need and some need a lot more than what is in the mix. So I usually like putting a diluted nutrient solution. I usually do half and sometimes I do the full the full blast of my Leka nutrient solution. And that's how we got here. Okay, no, I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, oh my God. <laughs> The leaf almost pushed y'all off the counter. Okay, let's put some water. I'm just rambling. I just don't wanna film that other video, guys, or the other videos today, but I have to. We are Future Kevin Zoom In. Just about halfway. But yeah, what a beautiful plant, guys. What a beautiful, look at the abs. Oh. Okay, let me bring her. She's beautiful, oh my gosh. Ah, <sighs> okay guys, I guess that's it. I am so behind. I have so much to do, guys, I'm sorry. So this plant review is gonna be really short compared to, the, compared to the other ones. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later, bye.